You know, in the recent years, there's been an explosion in the development of medical health apps. With over 40,000 that are actually available for people to download off the net, people are getting pretty accustomed to the integration of technology plus their most intimate health information. Let's take women, for example. There's probably nearly 100 apps that are out there for women to use if they want to, for example, check their menstrual cycles, their fertility, either to avoid pregnancy or even if they're trying to get pregnant. Is all that data that she's placing in your smartphone your own? What happens to the most personal and intimate details of your life after you place it in your phone? Is it possible that the apps that you choose to guard your most personal information might be using that information against you? You're gonna wanna hang around for this next one. Roll intro. So let's just get down to it. We're gonna talk about your period tracker app, how they may not be as accurate as you think, and not to mention they may not be as trustworthy as you have known them to be. Now I know a lot of you women out there use some sort of menstrual cycle tracking app or fertility app for a lot of different reasons. A lot of your main reasons might be to just keep track of your menstrual cycle, sometimes just to keep up menstrual cycle symptoms. Some may use it just to keep better data so they can speak to their doctor or their healthcare provider with. Some women might use it for pregnancy reasons, either to try to get pregnant or to avoid pregnancy in many cases. Because honestly, who wants to write all that information down? The most popular apps have been downloaded over a million times each. So you've got to understand there's no single or regulatory agency or government body that's looking at these apps to check for their accuracy or just to see how medically sound they are before they come on the market and for the use of the regular general public. So you may have different experiences depending on which app that you use and how you use it. And in some studies it showed that 19% of all the period tracking apps had a lot of misinformation included in it. Not to mention, they would also like to use a lot of terminology or health related jargon just so it sounded a little bit more credible to the common user. While of course not having any sort of scientific background to actually base their information that they're giving you on. If you're gonna use these tracking apps, great. Not a problem, but you have to go in there knowing that it's just to be used as an approximation. There's a lot of variables that go into a woman's menstrual cycle. So if you're trying to use this as a primary means to not get pregnant or a form of contraception, you've gotta know that this is not a reliable way to not get pregnant. And if you're having unprotected sex, you gotta know that this will not be 100% accurate for you and you should always wear some protection. Speaking about protection, the question you should be asking yourself is, who's protecting your data? I mean, you guys are putting your most intimate and private information into this app, but what happens to it after you place it in there? A lot of these apps are asking you, hey, when was your last period? How are you feeling? How heavy was your period? Were you having sex? Stuff that you probably wouldn't even share with your own provider. Here's a little food for thought. In December 2018, Privacy International showed that 61% of all these period tracker apps immediately or automatically transferred all of that information straight over to Facebook. And this is even if you didn't have Facebook or not, if you didn't have a Facebook account, the information still got sent to them about you. So some of the largest corporations on earth might know your most important private and sensitive details that you can imagine. What kind of stuff you might be wondering, well, what do you put in your apps? So if you think about it, as soon as this information gets shot over to Facebook, well now they know when your last period was. When's the likelihood of your next period? How do you feel about yourself? What's your mood? How heavy was your flow? When was the last time you had sex? Was it protected? I mean, you name it. And then some of those apps they actually have diaries where they want you to put details about how you were feeling or what about your sexual experience. So much information that you're putting into these apps and you should know that a lot of it's going verbatim. I mean, word for word, everything that you put into these apps in some cases are going straight to Facebook and being used against you. Ah, here we go. Literally two hours ago, I filled in a poll on the app which asked about UTIs, urinary tract infections. I filled it in and then I go on Facebook and this is there. Now I won't go through all the menstrual apps, but one in particular is called Maya. Maya is a very popular menstrual tracking app with over 5 million downloads on the Google Play Store. It's one of those apps that wants you to share as much as you can on their app. Why? because it's sharing it with Facebook. So Privacy International revealed that as soon as you even open the app up, it automatically sends information to Facebook. Moreover than that, as soon as you open the app up and they ask you to agree to the privacy policy, it's actually already sent information over even before you press that button. 
which actually raises some serious transparency concerns. So you might be wondering to yourself, well, why exactly do they want my information? There's an easy answer for that one, cause you're worth money. I mean, if you think about it, all the questions that they ask you on your app, well, are you feeling dizzy? Are you feeling constipated? Are you feeling moody? Maybe you're PMSing and you're having a lot of cramps. Next thing you know, you're on Facebook, all of a sudden get an ad for Advil. Coupon for out of the blue, but it's not out of the blue because they know your patterns. They know your habits and they know a lot of things about you, again, that your most intimate partner may not even know. However, as of recently, after being exposed by Privacy International, a lot of these apps have changed their practices and now they don't share that information with Facebook. Again, I'll put a few of those below as well, but one of those apps, namely, is called Clue, which is a very popular app now, and as soon as Privacy International put them on blast, well, they change their practices, they encrypt their information, they don't share it anymore with Facebook, and they keep it all on their personal databases that are secure. Supposedly. So like I said, there's nothing wrong with using these period tracking apps, but you gotta know what you're getting into. So here's a quick little tip for all my Apple users out there. Apple just came out with their own cycle tracking app. So Cycle Tracker, which is a new period tracker from Apple, well it can take the place of a lot of the third party apps that are out there, and like we said, may or may not be very trustworthy. But one of the major benefits in using Apple's period tracker versus using a lot of the third party period trackers is the fact that Apple already has a health app which houses a lot of your personal information to begin with. So a lot of your thermometer readings, your steps per day, your blood pressure readings, things like that are already inside the Apple ecosystem. So now you just have one more thing that you can put in there and where it's all secure. And you don't have to worry about Apple selling your information to Facebook or any other third party publishers or marketing agencies for their bottom line and just for them to make more money. At the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with using any of these period tracker apps, but not to be used as your primary method of contraception. And also, you don't want to put anything on there that you wouldn't want the world to see. So if you don't want the world to know exactly when the last time you had unprotected sex, maybe you just want to keep an actual written diary in those cases about your most intimate information that you wouldn't want the world to see. If you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Don't forget to subscribe below and press that like button. So then it's your man, The Fresh Pharmacist. I'm out. Peace. Boy, it's good.